This is the news bits on NCBN. I am Ayubelia. Welcome. The federal government is making efforts towards ensuring that issues relating to the reversal of the United States suspension of the issuance of immigrant visas to Nigerian passport holders is addressed. This was contained in a statement released by the special advisor to the President Muhammadu Buhari, Femi Adeshina, after receiving the report of the Committee on Citizen Data Management and Harmonization chaired by the Minister of Interior, Rauf Aregbeshola. The committee concluded its assignment and addressed the concerns of the United States on citizen data that led to its imposition of visa ban on Nigerians. Out of the six areas raised by the United States, two have been fully met, two substantially met while work is ongoing on the remaining two. The committee was set up in February to address issues that led to the U.S. temporary visa restrictions on Nigerian passport holders. On his part, the president pledged Nigerian government's commitment to sustaining the follow-up of the removal of the visa restrictions by the United States and developing a credible, harmonized national identity data management system. The suspension came into effect on February 21, 2020. Now, the federal government of Nigeria is considering the production of a new national identification for Nigerians. While interacting with the press, Minister of Communication and Digital Economy, Isa Pantami, during the week disclosed that the digital identification card will be attached to individuals' database and will conform to global standards. This, according to him, was part of report submitted to President Muhammadu Buhari by the Committee on Citizen Data Management and Harmonization, headed by the Minister of Interior, Ogbeni Rauf Aregbeshola. Now, the Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed, has stressed the need for Nigeria to accomplish a well-built third quarter 2020 economic performance to prevent the country from sliding into recession. She disclosed this at the opening of a five-day interactive seating on the 2021-2023 medium-term expenses framework and fiscal strategy paper held in Abuja. The minister said that the COVID-19 epidemic had added pressure on Nigeria's foreign exchange, further stating that the disruptions in worldwide trade and logistics would as well negatively have an effect on customs duty collections in 2020. According to her, COVID-19 control measures although necessary, have inhibited domestic economic activities with significant negative impact on taxation and other government revenues. The minister equally pleaded the support of the National Assembly to ensure coordinated oversight, as this, she stressed, will help to achieve said target. Now, there are growing concerns on the effect of the devaluation of the Naira, especially on Nigerians schooling abroad as the persistent dollar scarcity, which led to the weakening of the Naira, may result in increase of tuition fee. The Central Bank of Nigeria had in March 2020 devaluated the official exchange rate from 307 Naira to a dollar to 360 Naira per dollar. The Apex Bank subsequently moved the Forex rate from 360 to 379 Naira to a dollar due to the effect of the coronavirus pandemic, which also caused decline in global oil price. Apart from the payment of tuition by foreign students, financial analysts warned that the development might also affect cost of living and other financial transactions. The purchase of vehicles auctioned by the Nigeria Customs Service has been floored by the activities of fraudsters, leading to the loss of money for many Nigerians. Following this, the Nigeria Customs Service adopted better ways of providing Nigerians with the opportunity to ensure it is fraud-free. In this special report, NCBN correspondent Abdul Karim Zormi takes a look at the processes of the Customs e-auction. Launched in 2017, the e-auction process sought to make bidding of vehicles and other seized items as easy as possible. This is basically a streamlined process that leverages on information technology to give all Nigerians equal chance to participate without recourse to social economic status, ethnicity or religion. Fast forward to 2020 and the e-auction has seen success. The process is simple. 
have a valid TIN number authenticated by the Federal Inland Revenue Service, opening an e-wallet upon registration, choosing the bank of choice, and paying a minimum fee of 1,000 Naira through the e-wallet. It hasn't been easy. With alleged cases of being unable to access the site or fraudulent persons, making things difficult for the potential buyers. People try to connive and manipulate and beat the system. It was actually a challenge for us and we eventually overcome it because we constantly, even, even as I'm speaking with you, now that we've overcome most, if not all the challenges, we are still monitoring the system to ensure uh, that uh, possible trends are detected and tackled uh, appropriately. In the most recent e-auction, 6,938 bidders participated and 174 sales were made in the three-day window, according to the official source of customs. This shows the system works, and in case of hiccups, the Nigerian Customs Service will do everything they can to rectify the issue. The former manual process uh, was prone to all sorts of uh, abuse. Uh, people were, for instance, accusing the Nigerian Customs Service of uh, allocating uh, seized or overtime cargoes to their cronies or to highly placed Nigerians. The electronic process provides a level playing ground for every Nigeria. It's, it has no respect for your age, for your status, for your religion, for your tribe and all that. It does not know anybody. It's blind to all these uh, differences. So as long as you are a responsible tax-paying Nigerian with your tax identification number, you are qualified to participate. The system isn't without flaws, and the Nigerian Customs Service assures that they will do everything in their power to ensure seamless, transparent, and credible process. Abdul Karim Zermi, NCBN News, Abuja. Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Baja Biamila, has accused some revenue generating agencies of expending monies to fund unnecessary projects. Baja Biamila disclosed this at the dialogue session on medium term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper organized by the Finance Committee for Heads of Revenue Generating Agencies. He expressed regret that certain agencies have diverted monies to fund trivialities, therefore causing government to take on due loans in order to finance priority projects. He frowned at the agency's continuous inability to observe revenue remittance agreements. Now, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Muhammadu Buhari, has expressed his government's readiness to expend more on infrastructure in order to drive investments and create greater job opportunities. A statement signed by his special advisor on media and publicity, Femi Adeshina, said that the president made the revelation at the virtual commissioning of the Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board building headquartered in Yenogwa, Bielsa State. The 17-story building called the Nigerian Content Tower has a 10 megawatts power plant and a 1,000-seater conference center capacity. The president expressed joy at the direct and indirect job openings which have come about because of the project. Moving on now, the National Judicial Council has recommended the appointment of 22 judges for the Supreme Court as well as many other courts in the country. The Director of Information of the NJC, Mr. Soji Oye, made this known in a statement issued on 13 August 2020. According to OE, the recommendation was made to the Supreme Court at its second virtual meeting held on August 11 and 12, 2020. The meeting, which was chaired by the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Tanko Mohammed, recommended a total of 22 judicial officers across various courts. The recommended candidates for the Supreme Court bench, which currently has 12 justices, will add to the list of four others whom the NJC had recommended to President Muhammadu Buhari. However, the 22 judicial officers newly recommended by the NJC are for appointment as justices of the Apex Court and as heads of other courts, judges of High Court, states, caddies of state, Sharia courts and judges of customary courts of appeal. 
Now, the Nigeria Police Bauchi State Command has confirmed the killing of a member representing this constituency, Musa Mante Baraza, in the Bauchi State House of Assembly by unknown gunmen. The police public relations officer in the state, DSP Ahmed Wakili, confirmed Friday morning that the member was attacked and killed by yet to be identified suspected gunmen late Thursday night at his residence in Das. He said that though the aim of the attack was yet to be ascertained, the gunmen are suspected to be armed robbers who invaded his house last night, abducted two of his wives and one-year-old child after killing the Bauchi assembly member. The Minister of Defence, Major General Bashir Magashi, has inaugurated the refurbished ballistic vest production unit and special equipment factory as well as inspected some ongoing projects being executed by the Defence Industries Corporation of Nigeria. This was during a two-day working visit to the Defence Industries Corporation of Nigeria, Daikon, Kaduna. The Defence Minister's tour of duty to Daikon, which is the second in recent times, coincides with the 56th anniversary of its establishment. The inauguration was in compliance with the federal government's policy to implement the local content initiative to drive national aspirations for technological advancements. The minister charged the management of the cooperation not to compromise globally acceptable standards in the production of weapons for induction into the theatres of the ongoing military campaigns to defend the nation's territorial integrity. Residents of Unisari community in Unisari local government area of Yobe state have been rendered homeless by flood following hours of heavy rainfall in the area on Thursday 13th August 2020. The flood also destroyed property worth millions of naira. Unisari community leader Sheriff Zana Unisari confirmed this to newsmen via a telephone conversation attributing the flood to heavy downpour that occurred, adding that he had already communicated the incident to the Yobe State Emergency Management Agency and appealed for urgent intervention. These areas were reportedly flood prone, but this was the biggest flooding experienced in recent times as about 200 houses were said to have been affected by the flood. Now on entertainment news, award-winning actor Genevieve Naji added another feather to her cap. Genevieve, who carved an H for herself in Nollywood and Hollywood, has been chosen as the ambassador of the Toronto International Film Festival 2020. The Nollywood star and producer has joined the list of 50 celebrated film makers invited as ambassadors of the film festival. The esteemed film festival will be opting for digital screenings and virtual red carpets in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic. The festival is scheduled to kick off from September 10th to September 19th, 2020. Let's now join Ne Opia Clark for the Sports Beats. Thank you, Ayuba. Head coach of Sunshine Stars football club Kabiru Dogo is in stable condition and out of danger, according to an aide of the tactician Langwe Famakinwa. Dogo, who was involved in an auto crash at Abaji along Abuja Lokoja Express Road in the early hours of Thursday the 13th of August, was travelling to Akure from Lafia to hold a meeting with top officials of Ondo State Football Agency on Friday. The former Nasrawa United coach was extracted from the damaged car alongside his driver before they were rushed to a nearby hospital. Dogo, who was former coach of ABSFC, has been in charge of the Akure Gunners since 2018. Arsenal has signed Brazil midfielder Willian on a three-year deal after the 32-year-old's contract with Chelsea expired. The Blues had offered the player a new deal but were unwilling to match what the Gunners had on the table. Willian made 339 appearances for Chelsea after signing from Russian side Angie Makhachakla for 30 million in 2013. Arsenal manager Mikel Arateta said his team had a clear intention to strengthen the team in attack and he believes William is a player that can help the club's ambition. 
RB Leipzig claimed the scalp of Spanish giants Atletico Madrid in the UEFA Champions League quarter-final match decided on Thursday night at Estadio José Alvalade. Leipzig, who went into the encounter as Clare underdogs, triumphed 2-1 thanks to Tyler Adams' strike, which was aided by a deflection in the 88th minute. Earlier, Dani Omo put the German contingents in front before João Felix equalised for Diego Simeone's side from the spot in the 71st minute. Leipzig, tutored by Julian Nagelsmann, has now earned the tag of the tournament Dark Horses as they find themselves in the last four of Europe's premier football competition. Meanwhile, Bayern Munich will clash with Barcelona at Estadio de Luz later today in another quarter-final clash of the UEFA Champions League. The Catalan giants are searching for their sixth Champions League title, just like their counterparts from Bavaria. That's all for the Sports Bits. Over to you, Ayuba. It's now time for our weather forecast, and Jordan Atahiru has that packaged for us. Welcome to the weather forecast for Saturday the 15th of August 2020 across some parts of Nigeria and some parts of Africa on NCBN. Abuja will experience gentle breeze with a nighttime temperature of 21 degrees Celsius. Likewise, Lagos, Kano, Potakat, Uyo, Oweri and Onicha all at 21 degrees Celsius. Enugu, Iloin, Katsina, Nasarawa and Jalingo will be mostly cloudy tomorrow with a nighttime temperature of 21 degrees Celsius. Mwahia, Belkota, Bochi, Kaduna, Ibadan and Oshubu should hope for gentle breeze and thundery showers all at 20 degrees Celsius. Lokoja should anticipate light showers at 22 degrees Celsius. Likewise, Kalaba, Makodi, Gumbi and Genagua, Mina, Yula, Asaba, Jigawa and Kuso will all experience a nighttime temperature of 22 degrees Celsius. Sokoto and Meduguri will experience increasing clouds at 23 degrees Celsius. Bininkebi should hope for the highest nighttime temperature at 24 degrees Celsius and Joss will experience the lowest temperature with occasional rainfall at 15 degrees Celsius. At some other parts of Africa, it will be a cold night in Cape Town with a nighttime temperature of 10 degrees Celsius. Kampala will experience thundery showers at 18 degrees Celsius. Yaoundé should hope for gentle breeze at 20 degrees Celsius. Accra will experience a nighttime temperature of 23 degrees Celsius and Dakar will experience 25 degrees Celsius. That's our package on the news bits. Kindly follow our social media handles for more updates. I am Ayubelia. Thank you for watching.